Hey everyone, me Kevin here with updates from the Federal Reserve and what they call a dire situation. These are important signals for us to pay attention to, so here's an outline of what we're going to talk about in this video. First, timing, then some updates and quotes from the Fed, which are new, and then we'll talk about some recommendations for us, whether we're at stocks, real estate, or we're not in those things yet, and we just need a little bit more guidance to be able to survive this storm that we're in. And remember, this is why this is important. Over the last three weeks, I've made four warning videos from the Federal Reserve. After my first three warnings, tech stocks pulled back around 20%. Also remember, back in the first weeks of March, the Federal Reserve on a Sunday issued a massive unexpected warning, and that was right before the big crash that ended at a bottom on March 23rd. So pay attention to the Fed, even if you don't like them, even if you think they got a funny money printer, you gotta keep in mind, this is basically an organization of 2000 economists sitting around going, uh oh, we got a problem over here. So it's good to take hints from them. All right, so first, the Federal Reserve meets this week for a two day policy meeting starting September 15th, ending September 16th. And we'll probably get some sort of press conference after the 16th. Obviously, the market is going to be very tentatively looking for any kind of good news from the Fed, though it's quite possible the Fed is just in a very tough spot and can't really do anything because Congress is utterly failing our country on providing the stimulus we need. See, the Federal Reserve hates stalemates in Congress and they also hate politics, which is why they rarely comment on them. However, according to the Wall Street Journal this morning, when the Fed does, we know that situations are quote, dire. It was their word choice. Here's some quotes we have recently. Chicago Fed President Charles, uh, Charles Evans told reporters, quote, trouble is brewing with the expiration of relief programs and that partisan politics will, and a lack of action on stimulus or inadequate actions present a very significant downside risk to our economy today. San Francisco bank president, Mary Daly said more stimulus now is appropriate. I almost think that's an understatement. Neil Kashkari of the Minneapolis Fed says, if we keep along this path of no or too little stimulus, we will just have a very muted economic recovery. So why is the Fed so concerned? After all, plenty of the economy is rebounding. Sure, there are some laggers, but we got lots of the economy doing okay, right? Well, here's the thing. Over 2 million people so far have already permanently lost their jobs. With 30 million people on unemployment, expectations are that 40% of them may never get their jobs back. That means we face another potential 12 million people losing their jobs out of 155 million workers in America. That's another 7.7% .7 of American people losing their jobs permanently. And this is different from 8.4% unemployment. We're talking about permanent job losses. Like the jobs are gone. It's not like you got fired and the job is going to somebody else. No, just gone. And the Fed is now referencing a Columbia University study which reports that stimulus specifically from the government is what we need to avoid a slower and worse recovery. Here's the way I thought about it when I was reading the Chicago study. Imagine this, we're on a big pirate ship and we're towing a lifeboat behind us. We're tethered, we're attached by a thick rope. Well, on that lifeboat is retail, hospitality on, and, and travel. On the pirate ship is tech and real estate and companies that do well during the stay at home economy. Well, then when the Federal Reserve comes in to add you know, monetary stimulus, like lowering the interest rates, think of them like raising the sea level. The pirate boat goes up and the you know, boat that we're tugging along goes up as well. But the problem is the little boat that's being tugged along is underwater. So it's being tugged along underwater and when the sea level rises and you're underwater, you're still getting screwed. In other words, everything the Fed is doing is really overstimulating tech and real estate. But the problem is the lifeboat, retail, hospitality, travel, they're all still underwater and nobody's coming to yank them up out of the water, AKA there's no Congress coming in with a helicopter to give some stimulus money and to bail some people out of the madness. In fact, it's fair to say that the lifeboat is drowning and there's an anchor pulling it down and that anchor is called COVID. Well, hopefully you like that analogy so far, but let's try to pull some bottom lines from this because here's the bottom line. If Congress swoops in and finally provides some stimulus, maybe, just maybe, we could eliminate this anchor and everything can slowly start going back to normal. Obviously, taking control of the pandemic and eliminating the anchor in the first place is nice, but it'd be nice if somebody were up there giving it a little bit of a counterweight, because right now we're not seeing that counterweight. So this means a few things. Even when a vaccine gets approved, researchers believe it'll be another year before we actually get enough people vaccinated to see improvements in retail and hospitality and travel. 
By then, many of these businesses could be bankrupt, which means the small stores and restaurants that we wanted to travel to that we thought, you know what, they're gonna get a PPP loan and they'll survive, they'll get a PPP loan and then we'll just bridge the gap, that's it, and then we'll be back to normal. Well, if this lasts for another year, which it might before we actually have herd immunity, those stores and restaurants and places we might wanna to travel to on our vacations might not be there anymore. And this is not good for the long run in stocks. In fact, many of us who still invest in recovery stocks like Delta, Carnival, or Cheesecake because we believe these stocks are gonna skyrocket when a vaccine comes out, we're probably going to be right. But I think that jump that we're going to see has a very good chance of falling right back down under the heavy weights of debt that these companies are basically burdened by just to try to survive. In other words, that lifeboat even though we're trying to bet on it, like one day it'll come up above water. Yeah, it might surface, but it, as long as that anchor is still there, it might go back down. And so keep that in mind if you're trying to make money quick on the recovery sector. It's something that has made me nervous since about May that we're not seeing as quick of a recovery as we had been expecting. Which means right now is really the time to be careful if we have anything related to the recovery sector. Small stores, crafts, restaurants, travel, hotels, be careful, limit your exposure here is just a big warning that I have for everyone. There are a lot of economists calling these stocks value traps for a good reason. Again, they might bounce on a vaccine, but they might come right back down under the burdens of debt. Instead, things that we should be focusing on right now are probably instead of focusing on trying to make a quick buck on recovery stocks, maybe we should try to do whatever we can to retool our skills away from jobs that aren't doing well right now and instead focus on jobs that are doing well. Heck, yesterday I released a video on my analysis on the tech company Snowflake and how there are literally hundreds of companies hiring what are called specifically Snowflake engineers. And the starting salaries are $130,000 to $170,000 to be a Snowflake engineer. You could probably learn how to do that online in a matter of a couple months. It is insane the amount of money that is on the pirate ship. This is why lending, real estate agents, tech, 3D scanners, they're winning right now. And so be on the winning boat. <laughs> Whatever you can do, try to retool to get on that winning boat and get off the underwater lifeboat. Number two, real estate, we gotta keep this in mind, real estate might balloon over the next three years before actually overheating. And this isn't super great because it makes it harder for us to get in, right? Because prices will slowly kind of keep ticking up because rates are so low and there's so little inventory right now, which we might see inventory balance out next year, but the point is rates are still low. So we're still going to see this upward pressure on real estate prices, at least for the time being, until of course rates you know go up again. So it's very desirable to buy real estate right now because of that, especially if you can get through the multiple offers, which usually you can do, especially if you use the tactics I talk about in my courses linked below, courses on money and real estate and stocks. I teach you all the tricks. But the point is, if you're not in real estate or stocks or you're on that lifeboat with some kind of job, you're probably being left behind right now, which is just a brutal reality. And I hate being the conveyor of that, but you probably already know it. So I'm not telling you something you don't already know, but hopefully I can motivate you to do something to retool either your investments or what it is that you do to actually join, well, the, the wealth party, so to speak. Uh, and and it's, it's really sad because this is why we're seeing that widening of the wealth gap. I think the pirate ship and the lifeboat example is, is a really good example. Like the only thing holding back the pirate ship is that rope because it's like the pirate ship's looking back, come on, recovery stocks, like, can't we just cut you loose? And the pirate ship can keep floating up, but our economy doesn't work that way. See, when the lifeboat is sinking, it drags down the pirate ship because people stop paying their rent, then real estate investors have less money to invest, they have less bills, or they have to cut back on bills and expenses, which slows down the entire economy. That's just how our economy works. But consider this, half of economists today expect that the Fed will not raise rates until 2024. Keep this in mind too. The Fed has said they probably won't raise rates until 2023. Yet half of economists are betting that they actually mean 2024, which basically means low rates might be here to stay for the next few years. Being on that pirate ship is probably the place to be at least for the next couple years. Number three though, be prepared for much more volatility. It's nice to think that we're all just off the coast of Spain and seas are nice and smooth and we've got a beautiful blue sky uh, with, with the birdies guiding us where we gotta go. But the reality is the market is such that we're in a complete disaster of a storm right now. Yeah, we've had this appearance of a V-shaped recovery, but that's maybe because our pirate ship kind of fell below the surface of the water a little bit and we kind of came back up. That bob back up 
is really fast. Those are what the Fed calls the easy returns. Those are the easy gains, popping the pirate ship back up. You know, we bail out the water and pop the pirate ship back up. The hard part is getting through the rest of this storm. And that's why Mary Daly of the Fed says we should expect a long, bumpy swoosh of a recovery. Think Nike swoosh, except it's really jagged and nasty. So keep that in mind. If you're investing right now or you're thinking about investing, I highly, highly encourage you to take a post note and write down two things. Number one, when do I need the money that I'm investing? If you don't need the money for 10 years, good. That, that swooshy check mark that looks like this and gives you heart palpitations every day, it makes you wanna check that you have life insurance still active, link down below, you can get in as little as five minutes. Well, that's gonna smooth out over the long run and hopefully we continue to trend upwards as history has tended to be you know, shown to be true. Uh, the second thing to write down, in addition to when do I need this money, the second thing that I would recommend you write down if you're investing or retooling right now is when am I getting paid next so I could buy more during these crazy bumps? How can you plan to invest more during all these bumpy times? That's generally a recommendation that I have. And think about your pay, which getting paid goes back to actually having a job that pays decently. You could be a snowflake engineer and get paid 130 dollars to $170,000 a year. It's probably going to be a whole lot easier to invest than if you're working at a restaurant, your hours have been cut, and look, I used to do this, your tips are falling because everybody's hurting out there. So things to keep in mind. You're serving less tables because of social distancing, it might be time to retool. If you're a trader, you know, you might wanna be up on the deck, but don't be surprised if you get splashed and thrown around a lot. For the buy and holders, the rockiness isn't going to go away though, so keep this in mind. Uh, and, and the bottom line is, I, I think at this point, it's sad to say it, but it's hard to expect that Congress can really do anything. Maybe Trump can come through on some executive orders, uh, although who knows how those will be challenged. Uh, so a lot to be determined, but for now, just expect to remain in the storm. Last, on Wednesday, Expect the Federal Reserve to hold a press conference and give us some insights into their latest action. It's doubtful we'll hear something new, but it is quite possible that they could. So while it's doubtful, it's possible. The Fed could announce some kind of new action or some change, which could be market moving, so be prepared for that. For example, I don't think the Fed will, but let's just say they came out and said, we're gonna ramp up our buying of mortgage-backed securities. All right, great. Well, that might make it easier to get a loan after you know a few months once lenders adjust and, and they're like, ah, there's so much more liquidity, let's loosen our lending guidelines, which is just gonna help real estate even more. We could potentially even see real estate rates fall after that, mortgage rates. But for now, there's pretty much nothing the Federal Reserve can do to prop up that lifeboat that is underwater. So if you're on the lifeboat waiting for that bob up, realize you're basically drowning until the pop happens. And this is why I personally, and I've mentioned this, you know, the, the day I did it, I mentioned it, especially in my live stream uh, with, with all of you who come privately in the mornings. Uh, I am out of recovery, mostly, with the exception of like 2%. I, I've severely pared back, and since May, and that's mostly because I'm taking that money not to throw it into tech, which is pretty pricey right now, it's to throw it into real estate. Uh, good deals in real estate, buying real estate below market value. Uh, and that was my plan since March, uh, and, and that's what I'm following. So be watchful, have your sticky note ready. Heck, draw a picture of the pirate ship, and don't forget the lifeboat that's attached to it with the anchor, because we are a joint economy. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video and you enjoyed the analogies, please consider sharing this. And folks, we will see you in the next video.